A lot of people, they thought like, when they saw my video, they like, this dude is a rapper or something. Cause like how I like put words together and I mix comedy with, you know, like with the sales. Like, but I, I just listened to a lot of hip hop. Like I, my favorite rapper growing up was like Jay-Z, Eminem, Lil Wayne, you know, so. And I like how they like use metaphors, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I did. I, so at the time I'm 12 years old and I was like, can I say one thing? So I was like, you got kids? He was like, yeah. I was like, if two of your kids was playing and one broke the glass, you want to spank both of them, right? He was like, no. I was like, well, you should spank us for the bad performance. Let me just call my stupid advisor. And when I say a stupid advisor, you start laughing. So we end up upgrading him like Beyonce. So he end up getting like another year subscription. What's up, everybody? This is Sam Tiger with the DDD Podcast, and I'm here with Kenny Brooks, the funner salesman, funny salesman, and uh, he has done phenomenal things for our industry. He has a heart for our industry. He has over 10 years of background in our industry. He's knocking doors ever since he was 12. He just said, "I got my hustle as a sales guy," and he has made comedy and sales and combined the two to the point where one of his videos went viral. And that's kind of why a lot of people you guys know him from, where he's the guy in the window cleaning vid video, but he's done many, many more greater things and trained a lot of companies. He's trained a lot of sales reps. He's made a lot of money through the doors over the years um, to the point where he's also helped start and is working on producing his own TV show as a, as a door knocker. He's worked with um, and sold Jimmy Fox. And we'll go through all of his stories, so I don't need to steal his whole thunder on this intro, <laughs> but. Um, we just got done with D2D Con, and uh, that's, what, that's why I was out here. He's like, of course, I'm a D2D guy. I gotta go to D2D Con, the right, big, right. big door door event. Support. That's where I come yeah, from. Yeah, appreciate know? it. Yes, so t <laughs> so tell, uh, tell the world, like, what, what, I guess, well, yeah, well, let's recap the event. Like, what'd you, uh, what'd you think? Okay. What, it's your second year there. You were there yeah. a couple years back. Right. How was it? Yeah, well, it was amazing. It was a blessing, you know, like, uh, like, <clears throat> It's just amazing, like just like when I was knocking doors, we never had like nothing like this where you could just keep everybody fired up, keep them motivated, keep the industry growing, let them know that you know this is the best thing since a slice of bread. Because at the end of the day, like people they <clears throat> they they look at door door to door as like the underdogs. You know they underestimate us. You know what I mean? And that people don't understand that like door to door changed my life actually all the way from like 12 years old. And I'm gonna go in straight into it. Like as a, you know, I started door to door as just like a paper route. It was like a newspaper job. And how I got into it is simply fact, like my mother, she was, she raised six kids by herself, single mom. And <clears throat> I remember like growing like four or five inches, like 12 years old. So I, I got into basketball and my mom couldn't afford like, you know, you know basketball shoes. So. I went to school, did tryouts, and I was humiliated because like the basketball team was just roasting me. I was sliding across the gym. I forgot what shoes. I had like some XJ 900s or some Pro Wings. It was like some shoes that like you didn't want to have at that age. So I was getting roasted, and you I did was them sliding. pumps. Yeah, yeah, remember those pumps? Yeah, the, 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 the Allen Iversons. Yeah. Those oh, were like no, the we, shit back then. We was allergic to those. Growing oh, up. Like, okay. I I Detroit. Was, yeah, you got, you got a pair of those, you would grow a bump on your face. So, <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't get those. We couldn't afford those. So anyway, I, I was like playing basketball and I slid damn near out the gym, like to the lunchroom. Like that's how much grip it ain't have on the shoes. So on the way home from school, I'm, I'm humiliated. I'm, cry I'm crying like, cause I'm like, I can't believe I just got embarrassed. So I seen like, they had like these telephone poles where they staple like jobs on a pole. So I called the number and shout out to Robert Dyson. That was my first manager, like in a door to door. So. At first, I was going to be like a paper boy, you know what I'm saying? Like when you throw the paper to the addresses. And one day, this this guy came out, he started snapping on me. Like, he was snapping on me and my coworker. Like, you know, like, why are you throwing this paper in my yard? I, I've been canceled this subscription a long time ago. Now, like at 12 years old, like, I was already like listening to see like what, like a lot of people, they thought like when they saw my video, they like, this dude is a rapper or something. Cause like how I like put words together and I mix comedy with, you know, like with the sales, like, but I, I just listened to a lot of hip hop. Like I, my favorite rapper growing up was like Jay-Z, Eminem, Lil Wayne, you know, so, and I like how they like use metaphors, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I did. I, so at the time I'm 12 years old and I was like, 
can I say one thing? So I was like, you got kids? He was like, yeah. I was like, if two of your kids was playing and one broke the glass, you want to spank both of them, right? He was like, no. I was like, well, you should spank us for the bad performance. Let me just call my stupid advisor. And when I say a supervisor, you start laughing. So we end up upgrading him like Beyonce. So he ended up getting like another year subscription. So I went from like a paper route boy to like a salesman. So like I became like a salesman on an accident. So after that, you know, I started making it because like in, in sales, I realized at 12 years old, you can go from Warfare to Rockefeller. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no selling yeah. over your income. I went from like making like $50 a week delivering paper to making like two to $300, sometimes $500 a week. It just depends on your performance. You know what I mean? So at that 12 years old, I, I realized that you had, you just had to be yourself. Cause when I was like 12 years old, they gave us like a little, a script to me, a read, like you had to read the script. Like I'm working towards a college education. And I'm looking like, I didn't even believe the script because I'm like, I'm 12 years old. I'm not <laughs> working towards a college <laughs> education. College, yeah. I'm working to give me some shoes. Like I just want these basketball shoes so I can go and start on them so they won't talk about my shoes. No more, give me some shoes. So my short term girl was like, I'm just gonna work, make this $50 and then I'm gonna go buy me some shoes for 50 bucks. I know I can get some basketball shoes. You know what I mean? I'm like 12 yeah. years old. I'm still like in like junior high. You know what I mean? Like middle school. So it wasn't that expensive at the time. So. When I started making all of that money, I was making like, like my, my mother, at first she didn't want me to do it. She's like, you ain't about to go out and just knock on strangers doors. Then when I came in with that first paycheck, she like, oh yeah, keep doing it. You know, it was like one of those, like, cause I started making good Same money, you know. Thing happened to me. Yeah, so that's when, you know, so I did that from like 12 to 14. Like I, like my short term goal became like, I like, I had a dream then. Like I was like Martin Luther King. I was like, oh, I, I want to be successful. And I don't even, I forgot about even playing basketball. Cause it was like, I just fell in love with what I was doing. You know what I mean? And that's what a lot of people don't realize. Like when they first get into sales, they don't really believe, you know what I mean? They like, once you get your best, like and my favorite quote is there was this quote, like um, one of my mentors told me, they said, if you get your all, that's all you might need. You know what I mean? And that's all I did. Like when I was out there, I'm like, I'm just gonna give my best. I'm gonna give my best. Cause I, I realized sales was a mystery. So I just started having fun. I did it for like 12 to 14 and then, like when I turned 15, I got like taller, I got like six feet. So then I took basketball serious. So I started playing basketball. So um, I got out of sales. And then when my grandmother passed away, she was like a big influence to my life. And like when she passed away, that's when like I dropped out of school my senior year. I didn't even finish my senior year. And then I was like depressed. You know, I was like homeless, living house to house, staying with my mom, staying with my uncle, staying with my aunties. And then my brother, he was like, Man, remember how you was making all that money when you was like 14 years old? He was like, it's this traveling job. My friend worked there right now. He said he make he said some guys out there making like three, two to three thousand dollars a week. Here it is, we like homeless, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, let's do it. I seen opportunity because he was like, bro, if he making this, you a personality way in front of this, you go out there and kill him, you know what I'm saying? So we went, and that was like around like 2004. That's when I got into the industry where the video happened, you know what I'm saying? I started in like 2004. So I was like the top sales. When I first started, like, I remember my first check, I made like six or 700 bucks and I didn't even work a full week, but half of my check, I invested in myself. You know what I mean? I went straight to Barnes and Nobles and I like bought a lot of books. Like my first book was like Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. So I just started buying books. You know what I'm saying? They said, you want to have something from a dummy pit in a book. So the more I started buying books and started reading and educating myself on the art of selling, like I was reading Zig Ziglar, Closing of a Sale, you know what I'm saying? See you at the top. That's when I started elevating my thinking. So I was thinking outside the box because we like, when I was selling a cleaner product, it was a $40 bottle of cleaner and it was you it was like a sliding commission scale you can make 25 to 50 percent you know what i'm saying but you had to have 102 sales by the end of, you had to average 17 sales a day if you didn't write 100 sales at the end of the week then you made like 45 percent on down if you wrote 100 sales then you that's only how you make 50 percent yeah. so i'm like damn you gotta write 17 sales now here it is i'm like new you know what i mean but I, like my second day knocking, I wrote 17 sales. Cause I like, I, I was buying books. You know what I mean? Like, like before I bought books, I just, I came in like funny. Like I used comedy. Cause like when I seen my trainer sell, like, and shout out to um, Donald Davis, that was my trainer. And he like showed me the way of selling, like having fun, having personality. And I'm like, dang, I was like, he reminded me of myself when I was 12. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Cause I was like, I just thought of it like, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. We never gonna see these people again. You know what I mean? Yeah. If I bump into you at Walmart, it's ironic. You know what I mean? Cause I'm like, you know, this is, so I just started having fun. 
man, I just started buying books. And the more I started reading books and perfecting my craft, I used to just go in the mirror, study my um, sales talk, look at my face in the mirror, see my face, especially my body language, my hand gesture. Oh, okay, I wasn't serious. Okay, let me, okay, I got wrinkles in my forehead. Now, I'm practicing everything. I'm like playing it out, you know what I mean? So when I get to the real door, you know, like Michael Jordan, he practiced in the game, and then in the game, that's how you have a good game, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what a lot of people, like a lot of new people, they weren't doing that. Like, and I believe in like the five Ps, proper preparation, prevent poor performance, you know? So I started doing that, and then I just started outselling like a lot of the experienced people yeah. you know what I mean because I really and that's what I tell people all the time like you got to believe in yourself you know what I'm saying once you believe in yourself it don't matter what you sell it you yeah. know I believed in myself from day one because I was I, I, I was like broke you know what I'm saying like Chinese proverbs said if you can't smile you should open the store and they said if you're not smiling you should dig in your pockets if you can't pull nothing out you should hurry up and smile so I feel like okay I got a reason why I'm out here in the field you know what I mean so that's when I just started I, I became great I, like over like I, I'm talking about like a lot of people say success don't come overnight like I came in the game like Early doing real good. good like selling Lamborghini fast you know what I mean and not everybody's like that so what happens when you get guys that don't come out just naturally gifted like you. I train them. Like, that's what I did. I trained people. And a lot of people that I trained them, I showed them how to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, before I even knock on the door, I'd be like, look, I'm going to let you know right now, sales is a mystery. We might knock on the first 30 doors and they don't even buy from us. They might not even open the door. They might be rude to us. But watch how you see my attitude. You know what I mean? It's the yeah. three L's. And I was like, but if I hang in there like shingles and drywall and I stay positive because I know this is 90% mental, 10% physical, I'm going to get a good reaction. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Zig Ziglar said an average salesperson sells one out of every five. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a numbers game, you know? So... I'm telling, I'm preparing my training before we even knock on the door. I say, look, we might knock on the first 30 doors and we don't get no sale. Yeah. But just be positive. Don't even worry about it. Because after that, I'm going to get on the road like toilet paper. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but and then we might knock on the first 10 doors and get a sale. Then after that, we might have a slow, it might slow down. You know what I'm saying? But I'm still going to keep my momentum up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you never know. You know? And that, like how I train people, I say, my mindset is like, I care if you buy, but I really don't care if you don't buy. Yeah. Cause Jesus didn't sell everybody, so I know I ain't gonna sell everybody. Henry Ford didn't sell everybody. That's why your neighbor got a Kia. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pontiac didn't sell everybody. Yeah. That's why you got a Chevrolet. So I already know that everybody. You know what I mean? But I'm gonna give my best at every door. Yeah. How do you so. stay? How do you stay motivated when you know you have gone 20, 30, 40 doors and nobody seems to be biting? What do you do to come? I play a mind game with myself. I usually like, and that's what I learned, like with law of attraction, like manifesting and frequencies. Like I just talk it, I just speak it up. Cause like, yeah, like a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Like Thomas Edison said, if you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, you still right. Cause I'm your thoughts. So what I try to do is I never try to have stinking thinking. I don't want to tell myself the wrong thing because I believe it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like usually as a salesperson, I'll be like, oh, I'm about to go make a killing without a machine gun. I'm usually gonna go make a killing without a machine gun. If I tell myself, oh, they racist over here, nine times out of 10, you gonna believe it. Oh, they not buying, they ain't got no money over here, you gonna believe it. Like you ever did that to yourself? Like, oh, I'm about to sell this next house and you gonna knock on the door and they be an easy sale. Yeah. But then if you be like, oh, like that's why I was telling people when I train them, like I, oh, like when I did yesterday, when we was, you was doing the sales talk, I train people like that. Look, if I'm here and not interested at every door, I'm gonna go to this door and spend 15 minutes at the door just to get all the objections out the way. And then I'm gonna tell them exactly what they're gonna tell me. Hey, how's it going? I know you're not interested. I know you ain't got no time. I know you ain't got no money. I know somebody was just here. I know you told somebody to come back yesterday. I know your dog's having cats, your cat's having dogs. But can I say one thing since we got that one out the way? Now they're not about to tell me that. Yeah. But the only reason why I told you that because I've been hearing this all day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now once I get over that, I ain't about to hear it no more. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I do. I just stay motivated and then I fake it till I make it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I know if I'm having a slow day, I'm not going to let my customers know that. Yeah. When I get to your door, I'm going to act like I done sold everybody. Yeah. Y'all been on the road like They've been loving me out here. And I ain't got to sell them. I ain't got to sell yet. Yeah, you're just getting. Yeah. But I'm just yeah. inside your yeah. like, <laughs> uh, please, please right. do not like. And, and and he says a couple things, guys. I want to like reiterate this. It's the fake it till you make it. It's the every first impression. You don't get an opportunity to create a second impression after a first impression, right? Um, you know, and 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 just this whole mental, the ninety percent mental, and how he's just sitting there self talk, and he's like, "Do I have stinky, stinking thinking?" I love that. And uh, you know, <clears throat> a lot of guys are out there. Maybe that. What would you tell somebody? 
doesn't have as clever or maybe positive mindset, maybe they're a little bit more introverted than right. you are, right? You see a lot of sales guys that are like, well, I can't sell like you. I'm mm -hmm. sure you've heard that objection. Right. I'm not as witty, I'm not as funny, right. I'm not as clever. What would you tell them? I tell them just be yourself, you know what I mean? Because I'm me. I don't train everybody to be a comedian. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like Zig Ziglar said, when everything else fails, enthusiasm sells. If you're just excited about your job, you're gonna win. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Just you, you can be excited, but if you're out there like someone's making you do it, then that's when you're gonna hear like, oh, is they feeding you? Oh, you should get another job. Oh, you should yeah. go work at McDonald's. I would never punch a clock. Cause I don't want, unless I swing on Flavor Flav. Cause I feel like that I'm not like, in, in this industry, whatever you put in, that's what you get out. You know what I mean? Like, like, I, I, I remember working at Burger King for 30 minutes <laughs> and I quit. Soon as this guy took more breaks than a Kit Kat and me and him got $7 an hour and I was working my butt off, I said, he didn't deserve $7. He didn't even do nothing. Yeah. The fries got stacked up. I burnt burgers. I burnt buns because you was in the bathroom seven times and I'm just busting my butt and I'm doing all the work. In this industry, whatever you put in, that's what you get out. You know what I mean? So if you master your craft, so that's what I tell people. If you're not funny, just master your craft. Believe in yourself first. Who Like I always tell people this, who you gonna sell first? Myself. Then what you gonna sell? Personality. Personality don't necessarily gotta be funny. Like Jeffrey Gittimore says in the sales Bible, people buy personality before they buy merchandise. I actually knocked on someone's door before and they was losing a house. Oh, I can't afford it right now. Uh, he was like, oh, I can't afford it. I said, that's not a Ford, that's a Tahoe. And he started laughing, but he really couldn't afford it because he was losing his house. But I got them together like a family reunion so bad that he spent some of his money that he was saving to get into another house on me. You get what I'm saying? Here it is, this guy got a for sale sign in front of his house. He's losing his house and he still bought my product. Cause people buy personality before they buy merchandise. But he loved so me, true. you know what I mean? I'm pretty sure like we understand like the dynamics of what it takes to become a great salesperson. Yeah. There's so many people out there, Grant, Grant Cardone, a great salesman. He's not funny, he's not a comedian. You know what I mean? Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, they not comedians. You know what I mean? Jordan Belfort. Look yeah. at you, Sam. Yeah. Like we, like you know, it's different strokes for different folks. Like Gary Coleman. But what I tell people all the time, you just gotta believe in yourself. See, I believed in me, but like I said, who are you gonna sell first? Myself. Excuse me. Then what you gonna sell? Personality. See, once I sell my cell phone, I can do this job. Oh, this easy. Now I can sell personality. Yeah. Whether my personality could be dry sense of humor, whether it could be enthusiasm. Now I'm excited. You know what I mean? It's then what you're going to sell? The product. Now the product going to come. Now once I sell you on my service, because you like me, now you listening. Yeah. Then now I'm going to sell you on savings. Yeah. Then what do we have when we do this? Then you write your quota. You get a sale. You see what yeah. I'm saying? People don't know. But I broke the sales all the way down to the fundamentals, to the mechanics. Like I know the four steps to a sales talk. You gotta have your approach. You approach how you approach the door. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what the knock and the wait, hey, happy Monday. You know, that approach. Then your introduction. Now I'm gonna introduce myself. I'm gonna knock on the door. I'm gonna give you space like shuttles. I'm gonna back back. And then I'm gonna let you get comfortable. You know, then I'm gonna break the barrier with the approach. Then I'm gonna introduce. Yeah. And then I'm gonna demonstrate my service or my product, and then I'm gonna close you. It's yeah. the four steps to sell. Some people do it backwards. They'll go to the door and they'll try to do a demo before the approach, you know what I'm saying? They'll try yeah, to do the introduction before the, you know what I mean? Uh, it's so this is like the number one flaw I watch when I when I shadow sales guys is, it's like they go straight for the jugular and I'm like, dude, they don't even like you yet. Like, exactly. it's yeah. like you're asking for that, you're like, hey, let's go to bed. You're like, <laughs> Whoa, dude, let's like hold hands first. Like, yeah, 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 right, right. And, and it's like their objective is they have close, sell, sell, sell on their mind when your objective right at the very beginning needs to be make a friend. Like exactly. me and you, we're homies. Now you want to talk about what I got. I'm sleeping, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Right. And I think it's so funny because people that shadow me, you know, like you said, you're like, I'm funny. Like, I'm, I'm more just like fun to be around, right? Like a good energy, good, good right. enthusiasm. I bring some joke, I bring some make compliment, make you feel good, whatever that is. But I, I, you know, it's like the same technique as any top rep I've ever watched or interviewed or whatnot. I'm always like, you know what they're really, really, really good at? Being liked, mm -hmm. people like them. You know, it's funny, like I, we just did door to door con and um, you know, and I was like, man, all those people in there, they just, they're cool people. Like they right. like me, right. that's why they come. Or they like the speaker, that's why they come. But then it's like, you walk around and start meeting people and you're just like, 
why are all these really good people here and can afford a ticket to door to door con and can make make it in door to door right because they're cool people (laughs) and they probably are good at being like whether you go up and introduce yourself hi i'm kenny what's your name they're probably like, oh, Kenny Bro, what's up? And they're just like, dang, I just made like 500 best friends yesterday. Exactly. You know I, mean? right, right, I felt right. the same way. Like, you know, it's obviously like I walk around there and I was just like, dude, like everybody in here is rad. Like, I wish I could like actually have conversations with everybody. Like, I don't right. have enough time. I'm like, <laughs> ah! So anyway, it's just right. like, yeah, that's true. Be good at selling yourself. Be good at selling your personality. Be good at like, and then, talk, then and only then say, what, what service product am I coupling with this? Yeah, and that's the reset you gotta have every door. When you not walk to the next door, don't think about product. Think about, I am loved. I am the best. I am so cool, and everybody should be so excited to hear and love me because I'm gonna make a friend. You know. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Okay, so another advice. Okay, I'm a I'm a, I'm a sales guy. I've been doing it for maybe two three years. How do you stay motivated? Like, you know, you make money. You're maybe making a couple thousand a week at this point you know, and you have more than you need to live. What what do you do to keep people striving for bigger targets and stay motivated, like going to the next level? Yeah, elevate. I, ele- I actually <clears throat> use reverse psychology. Someone else trash is someone else treasure. First of all, I make that whatever they think that's big to them sound real small. Like, mm-hmm. I ain't nothing. Like when my trainees come in, oh, I just had 30 sales. That ain't nothing, right 50. The new person right here, he been here three weeks, he just had 31. How he got 31, you, you know what I mean? He had 31, and I'll just be playing with him. Like, I'm selling them on that he's better than you. Because at the end of the day, competition bring the best out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kobe Bryant wanted to beat Michael Jordan record. National knocking league, that's why I got this. You know exactly. What I'm saying? You know what I mean? Everybody, every great person wanted to feel like they greater than someone else. Do you think that's so, why LeBron James changed his number to 23? Yeah, he did. Come on, now nah, he had I, to. Yeah, he's like, I want to. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's why Kobe Bryant had so much respect for him. That's why he had 24. You know what I'm saying? But I looked at it like, oh, you one point better than him. Because 23, you oh, 24. Why you do 22? Too. But you never know, you know what I'm saying, the mechanics behind it. But how I became great, I had a lot of salespeople that was like, I was running circles around them, but they was running circles around me too. But consistency is the key, yeah. you know what I mean? Like endurance ran races. But how I became like a big thing is because I read this book called The Magic of Thinking Big. And once I read that, so good. I, yeah, I just, oh, I was thinking, I went from trying to write 20 sales a day to thinking about football numbers. I'm going to write 77. I'm at 96, I'm at 88, you know what I'm saying? That's how I end up breaking a record, writing 112 sales in one day because I wasn't looking at that little number no more. So what I do, if somebody already getting comfortable, like, oh, I just made $2,000, that ain't nothing, make 5,000. That ain't nothing, make 10,000. You gotta act like you broke, like you ain't made nothing, that's nothing, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then what, what, like, what, what you want? What's your wants, needs, and desires? You know what I'm saying? Like Eric Thomas said, if your want is bigger than this right here, you are gonna go extra hard, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just all about what you want. Love that. Um, so tell us about kind of maybe some of the crazy stories that obviously like you've sold all over the country. Well, I actually yeah. have two. Before I get into that, I'm going to keep it serious and we'll get more fun with this. Um, and if you're liking this, maybe drop a comment or a little thumbs up below. I'd love to hear you guys' feedback. So, um, but here, here's a here's a question and, and I don't want to come off the wrong way, but like you, you mentioned it earlier, you go into a neighborhood obviously being african-american a lot of times you go to a white neighborhood or a certain neighborhood you're probably like ding these guys are all racist or they, they treat me different and right. it's a thing it's, i dude i had reverse racism well, you when i went to, to black southern arkansas dude with well it was real racist but then i go to, i went to uh no not southern arkansas uh i was in a place in dallas where i was in a straight black neighborhood and i was like wow i'm getting like shamed in here <laughs> i seen a white dude in like two weeks like, it was weird but i so i felt it but i was like wow it's probably way more common for you to uh-huh. feel so I, how do you how do you help like somebody of different race go out door to door and feel like they're getting discriminated like what would you tell that person and if you ever had that number one it's not i don't look at anything as like color when i'm out in the area because like, first of all, I'm sizing everybody up. I'm reading people. Like, that's what I'm doing. Like, <clears throat> we we read people for a living. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we two steps ahead of the customer. That's what you're supposed to be. <clears throat> the reason why 
I don't feel like people racist. Like when I go knock on doors, because I come from Detroit, Michigan, yeah. where it's a lot of black on black crime. And I feel like we be racist towards each other because we killing each other. You know yeah. what I mean? That's bigger than somebody calling you out your name. You know what I mean? So that's why I like one of my episodes, and that's when I get into, uh, like I'm writing a TV show right now called Door to Door Chronicles. And the first episode is suicide. And then the second episode is N word. Cause suicide is like just devastating. This is why people gotta see this show because once they see it and like how we, it's mind changes and how we save people's lives and how we like, it's just amazing how, what we do as a professional. But so I knocked in Metro Oregon where it was raining. Like, cause I didn't knock it all over the world. I'm pretty sure you have too. Like I've been doing door to door for like 12 plus years. You know what I'm saying? Like selling the cleaner product. I did it from 2004 and then I, I got out the game like in 2012, 14. No, I, I did it 2004, got out in like 2015. And then I went back in cause then I started my own company doing fluid. And then I got, stopped in like 2017. But to make a long story short, I knocked in Metro, Oregon. And out there, it rains a lot. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like in Oregon and Seattle, a lot of salespeople don't like knocking in the rain. I'm pretty sure that you, like, you gotta motivate them. Cause yeah. they be like, as soon as they get wet, and they, it's over with, they, 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 yeah. they it, you know what I'm saying? They done turn into salt, sugar yeah. in the rain. So anyway, I'm motivating them. So I, I'm out there knocking with my team. Cause I'm like, they come into the van with excuses like, oh, they not buying over here. They keep slamming the door. They talking about why we in the rain and we, we need ponchos, we need umbrellas, all that. I'm looking like, I said, look, hot shots don't get wet. First of all, if you out there with umbrellas, right? You ain't. I'm. I'm looking. I'm I having just so, get so yeah. Time. I just, I just get, yeah. But I'm like I'm having so much fun. You ain't even gonna know that I'm working in the rain. So I got out with my team. Boom. I'm knocking with my team. Boom. So no, that's suicide. I'm gonna get to suicide later. I gotta go to why you said about yeah. the the color. I see how didn't switch gears, mm -hmm. but. We was working quarter lanes, Idaho. That's what it was. Yeah, now that's okay. all all white people. Yeah. Now look, I'm gonna tell you now. Utah, I love Utah. Utah was like my moneymaker states. I learned so much with Utah because the Mormons, the culture, they love door to door, they respect door to door, they go on missions, they hustle, they sell alarms door to door. So I get a lot of sales out there. They they love me. Then we went to Idaho right after that. You know, it's next door, like Pocatello, Boise, Napa, you know what I'm saying, Twin Falls. So we go to Idaho, boom, I'm kidding sales. There's Mormons there too. They love me to pieces like Reese's. Then we going up to Washington. So I go to Quarter Lanes. That's like the end. And it's a nah, whole nother world. Man, I, went from, yeah, I, went from, yeah. I went from hell to, I mean, heaven to hell. I go up there yeah. and they got like KKK compounds and they really didn't like my kind. I swear. Now this, I didn't even say they was right. Like my team told me like, these people racist. And like, look how they staring. I'm like, they not racist. They just probably never seen black people. That's why I'm like trying to throw them off. Like throw they mind. Like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? I don't even want to believe. So experience is the best teacher. So I'm knocking on doors. They actually calling me out my name, calling me the N word. I so that's why I got an episode called the N word. So I'm knocking on doors. They calling me the N. It's to the point I made up a funny joke. I said, "Don't shoot! I'm just the KKK." What? Yeah, the cool color kid. Like I'm, I'm like trying to get them going because I'm like, uh, they I already know they calling me on my name. Yeah. They already told me they got KKK compound, so I'm gonna make fun with it. So I knock on it. As soon as I said I'm the KKK, the cool color kid, the dude was like, "Get off my porch, nigger!" I said, "Well, that nigga owe me five dollars." He started laughing, and then as soon as he laughed, I said, "You see that spot right there? I cleaned the spot." And his exact words like, "Oh, that's some good stuff. I'll take a jug of that." nigger juice i swear to god he told <laughs> look right after that he told me to go to the curb and put my cleaner on the curb go knock on the next neighbor door when i knocked on the next neighbor door he told me he was going to pick up his cleaner and leave my 40 dollars on the concrete that's how i made the transaction that's how much he didn't like my kind he didn't say oh thanks for support thanks for buying i like your product he, like, that's no. how he bought he really didn't like me he liked that product for that oil Wow. So look, I go to the next door. So now look, your perception wow. is your reality. So now I'm going through neighbors calling me out my name. I use the KKK line. That still didn't work, even though I got a sale. So now I'm starting to believe what my sales team is believe. So yeah, I yeah. see this little white girl outside playing with her. Um, she was playing like with her bike and her dial. So I'm like, excuse me, excuse me. She was like, she was like kind of scared too. So before she ran out, I was like, can you tell your mommy there's a nigger at the door? <laughs> I said that. She ran right in the house. She was like, mommy, mommy, there's a nigger at the door. Her mom come outside and saw me. She was like, oh my God. And she slapped her daughter like, why did you say that? I said, don't worry about it, mom. It's just $39.95. And she bought a bottle. And then she was oh, like, look, God. I'm so sorry. We are not racist. We just moved in this town from Montana. She was like, I don't know why she said that. And I was like, oh my God, I just got her slapped. <laughs> and I got a sale and I walked off. 
So then I, I felt like kind of bad. I was yeah, like, that's what we get because that's what we do sometimes. We do. We, we like we would think just because it's one person not buying the whole neighborhood like that. You know what I mean? So, and this was a true story. Like I, I'm actually writing it as a show, and I was like, I felt like kind of bad. Like, but that's what really happened. But the town was like that. But everybody went like that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, but and it's crazy. I've had a lot of different races, females, tall, short, fat, black, white on my team, and. I've had a few of them come to me and they'd be like, oh, well, if if I were white, I'd be able to sell in this neighborhood. And I'm like, why why are you having this mentality? Like, and they would almost shame or guilt me because they're like, well, you have it easy. And I'm like, no, we just have different things going. You just gotta use what your cards are dealt with. Right, like, right, right. And I was like, I go to a Dallas neighborhood, or like, you know, I'll go into a rich white neighborhood, right? Or I'll go to Coeur d'Alene and I can like kind of dress up and look the part, right? And I'm like, but honestly, I'm also just another white dude. Like, you know what I mean? I'm also yeah. just another face in the crowd. Like, yeah. the fact that you can stood out. So your boy, Henry, so a lot of, long story, like, a uh, quick story. Like, I get my door knocked by the window cleaner guy named Henry Henderson, yeah. who's a guy that Kenny trained. Yeah. And he knocks, he's like, don't shoot, I'm the black kid. You know, first black guy to pass a PCI background check, is what he said. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, oh, okay. And he's like, hear me out before you put me out. And, he, and you know, he used the lines. And right. I'm like, dude, I do door to door. And that's probably why that, that you guys love the Utah people. I'm like, come on in, you know. And, and we filmed a video, it's on YouTube. Yeah, about like 200K. Yeah, it's it got pretty good. Views. Yeah. And, uh, and anyway, so I was like, this is really cool. And I you know, and I had seen your video and I had seen it. And I was like, you used a lot of the same lines or whatever. And, right. And, uh, but it was just interesting, you could tell, because there's no black people in my neighborhood, and automatically kind of had to overcome the whole black thing right at the get-go, thinking like, hey, is this guy like gonna steal my money, or is this guy, and I'm like, that's so sad that the world has to like, yeah, okay, it has to deal with that, you yeah. know, and, and I've got like stereotype, you know, stereotype. you get it when you go to black communities, you know what I'm saying, they think you with the police, or, yeah, it's like, that's what I tell people all the time, but like, that's why I said what I love about what you're doing with Door to Door Con is that, you make an awareness to the salespeople. Not not only that, as we teach them to believe in they said we got speakers that come out and motivate them, get them riled up, but also we let them know like awareness, like be proud of what you do, but at the same time protect what we built, yes. this foundation. Because like, look, this changed our lives. We we continue to change a million of people's lives, but at the same time, we didn't have this when we was knocking. We didn't have door to door con. No, we, we didn't knocking. have the universities have, and yeah, trainings we have, and culture. Yeah, and so that's why I was like, I want to build like an academy, like school of hard knock university where we teach people life. Cause like, like I tell people in my video, like if this was taught, this should be taught in like schools, colleges. You know what I'm saying? Cause we learned something that I didn't, I didn't learn none of this in school that I learned knocking on doors. You learn how to deal with your mental. You learn how to be a better person. You learn your strengths, your weaknesses. You know what I'm saying? You learn education for talking to the smartest people in the world. So it's so much stuff. And then it's balance. You get to balance yourself. But one thing that I was saying like earlier is that like I was rubbing shoulders. Like I used to work for the president. He was the president of the um, National Field Selling Association yeah. where they like go to meetings and then like they like they they find out about like license permits like what, what it takes yeah. to you know what i'm saying because you get some of these companies that are messing up for another company like i used to hate working over magazine people because they used to promise people lies and they wouldn't get yeah, the they magazine. didn't get the magazine so now they don't want to buy from me be like oh yeah like you know what i mean so i'm getting like they're it's assuming like, yeah, that you're a scam yeah, because, scam because they just got scammed you know what i mean or somebody promised them something that they was getting they didn't get it you know what i mean so and like they taught me like if this neighborhood was doing great and you enter that neighborhood and it's not doing that well, you should have never entered that neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? Because they was doing well without us. Yeah, Either so you're going to make it better or worse. So I'm going to talk about three things. And this is so important. So listen up. If you're in door to door, this is like what me and Kenny both really connect well on is obviously we've done this for over a decade. And we've not only had our lives blessed through door to door, we got into it young. He was selling newspaper. I was paying addresses on the curbs. Um, I got in at 11. He got in at 12. Like, I mean, it just very all through high school right and what's crazy is you know we started a, a new um initiative that is called street smarts so i founded the ddd association two years ago which is a nonprofit um that is helping work with licensing litigation helping states like we had the attorney general of utah right. yeah. up at um yeah. yesterday, DDD yeah. yesterday. and you know just working with the government to say hey how do we streamline licensing how do we be on their side how do we like make door to door good because you're right there are a lot of bad apples out there that ruin it for yeah. all the good people yeah, exactly but i look back to the high school experience the middle school experience and i was like street smarts is an education platform yeah, like exactly. school hard knocks i was yeah. actually going to call it school hard yeah. knocks 
And I was like, not book smarts, it's street smarts. Yeah. And it's the stuff you learn in the streets, like the communication, it's yeah. the work the ethic. Verbal, out of eye contact. Yeah. Work it, ethics, you know, the sense of humor, the, how to interact. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Dude, like, yeah. We should film some of the videos and you should be in it. Yeah, exactly. Let's do something today. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and just giving them opportunity to start a small little window cleaning company or sell cleaner yeah. or go sell cane paint curves, paint curves you know, lawn mow, I got, hang Christmas lights. I, I ain't trying to cut you off, I oh, yeah, swear. Yeah. Like, what I learned at 12 years old, I'm installing in my kids now. I got my kids, like, I got my daughter, she's 11, and yes. she's like the leader of her clan. She got all of them knocking, she's telling them, she training them. She's making like, Five hundred to a thousand dollars a week at eleven years old. Yes. It ain't even about the money. She just loved doing it. It's like in our like when we had kids like like LeBron James. He want not look at Bronny James. Look, look, you know what I'm saying? It's like you want your kids like a legacy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they it's in like it's in her like her whole attitude, her demeanor, like her like just her leadership. It's like I didn't teach her that. You know what I mean? It's and so that, that's what I love about it. Cause like the, when I installed that at a young age, it's like I had to show like look. And when they see me, I just took them out to record videos. That's all I did. I said, huh, I want you to, cause they on TikTok, that's how I gained like 2 million followers within like six months cause of my kids. Cause TikTok was mucusly and I'm like big on social media. And it was like, you should start a TikTok. Cause TikTok is like for the kids. And then she, all she was doing was recording my videos of me pitching, you know what I'm saying? Like with the, like the shoe cleaner stuff. And then she's like, dad, I want to try it out. And then she started selling like the shoe cleaner stuff. And then she was making money. Then she started paying for her own stuff, paying for her basketball stuff, this and that. Yeah. Then like, now she want to do it more now. So what they doing now is they going to like Costco's and Sam's Club and they buying like bulks of candy for fundraising and they selling it, but they got a human interest story. They got a reason why they selling it. Well, the reason why I'm doing this is because my dad, he's a viral salesman and he teaching us how to eye contact, how to be responsible at a You know what I'm saying? That's not true, people man. investing in them. Like, okay, he got hundred dollars for your basketball. He go to, you know what I'm saying? They, ain't, they don't even care about the candy. No. It's just that they like, this girl is out here knocking on doors. I guarantee you every parent would say, I would love, I would kill for my kid to do that. Yeah. And like for me, I'm like, I got a seven, a five, and a, and a two year old. And I'm like, dude, I, you, that inspires me. Yeah. Because like my dad didn't, my dad was an entrepreneur. My dad right. was successful. It wasn't until my cousin reached out and he said, Sam, you should come knock and paint curves with me. All and right. I was like, okay, let's try this. And it changed my life. Like, yeah. and, I, and I look at the, you know, I, I went to uh, Sean Reyes, the attorney general. And right. he goes, I have mad respect for door to door guys. And I was like, this is the attorney general. He says, if you can knock doors, you can do any job. You can do anything. You can job. do anything. I swear. That's and so if you, if you're teaching your 11 year old yeah. daughter, it's like, you can do anything. You can yeah. go get your face kicked in. Yeah. You can talk to any stranger. But it's like Grant Cardone. But that was, help you with other stuff. Everything. Because now, like, when she play basketball, she's more aggressive now. Yeah. Her attitude, she's a leader. She's talking on the court now. She learned that just for interacting. And you talking to a total stranger. We uninvited guests. Like, Zig Zig. And that's what I be telling, like, grown-ups. I'm like, look, here it is that you lazy. You grown. You got an excuse. She's 11 years old. She loves what she do. You see the difference? You want, you, like, and that Zig Zig was said the best. He said, as soon as a person get a job, they quit looking for work. You know yes. what I mean? You got a job. Now you don't want to work? You know what I mean? But with D to D, every day you got to show up to work. Yeah. Every day you got to go earn a new, exactly. new dollar. Every day you have, it's like, it's like you get a reset every day. You don't get a sale, you don't get paid. Right. It's that hunter versus gatherer. It's that yeah. carnivore versus uh, herbivore. And and I love, I think the world has a diminishing supply. It's like almost like the carnivores are becoming more and more extinct. Right. And more and more people are trying to just say, hey, I want to do little as possible and get paid the most amount of money exactly they and want a shortcut success yeah yeah and it's a problem like i think of like where the world will be in 30 40 years and if that's what our world foundation is built on is everybody's trying to get a shortcut sh uh, microwave mentality result and right. they don't learn the school hard knocks and communication and people like this world's built around people exactly yeah. it's not in a metaverse like sorry but we live in a real world not in the metaverse, exactly. and yeah. there's still gonna be like people interacting. Right. So I'm just like, oh, we're going the wrong direction sometimes. Sometimes. Right. So anyway, I, what other things are you passionate about? So you're building this show. So like, tell us about that. I, I part of the DD Association. I actually had a contractor out of Spain that was gonna do a documentary. We started fundraising. Josh Sutherland actually got behind it, and some other people. Right. And uh, we said, hey, let's build this show and expose publicly to the world how dope DDD guys is. Cause mm -hmm. you knock a door, 
And a consumer's assumption right away is this guy's gonna scam me, right? Yeah. It's like, how do we change the perspective of the community, the consumer, the world, of what door to door is? What are you doing to push that? Well, like, I just, the, the number one thing why I wanna do it so bad is because, like I said, people, like, when, when I went door to door and I used to tell people what I was doing, they looked at it like, oh, are you going door to door? Like, it, like it was, they was making it seem like it ain't cool to go door to door, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. I, but I make, they don't know I'm making way more money than them. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it wasn't even about the money. It was just about the education. It was yeah. about just like how I built myself. You know what I mean? So that's why I want to get this because like, it's this like a secret to society. Like door to door is like Illuminati. Because so like, like when people come, like like when I went to door to door kind, I'm looking at, so just talking to people, like me and this conversation and man, you have it, it'll go over some people here. They got like a nine to five or, you know what I'm saying? They really ain't never did it. They like, what is these guys talking about? You know what I'm saying? Cause we know the game. So that's why I really want to teach it to other people. But that's why I say we need like a documentary or even a reality show when we teach it. Cause once people see the ins and outs and the kink or what it did, like how it say, like I had a cousin, rest in peace, my cousin Buddha, but like I even brought him out. Like that's why I say, I know this saved my life. Cause I come from Detroit, Michigan, the inner city where I easily would have got influenced by gangs, drugs, violence, or, you know, doing the wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. my cousin, he was in the streets. I brought him out to go door to door. And then he wanted to go back to the streets and he got murdered. You know what I'm saying? So that you never know what this can do. You know what I'm saying? Like, you never know. It just builds character and it builds you. And then once you see what it can take you, the vehicle, you know, it's a stepping stone. But at the same time, you learn so much from it. That's what I'm saying. Like, with, with suicide, I got an episode called Suicide. Like, when I was saying I was working meth for Oregon and people didn't want to work in the rain. So I went out to train them and I took them door to door in the rain and they saw me dealing with adversities, but they saw me go to 15, 20 doors, they went by, but they saw me still positive, happy, cracking jokes. And you know what I'm saying? And then they was like, and they kept sitting like, I know he about to get a sale. I could just see how he act and he about to get it. I was yeah. like, yeah, the next house about to get it. I knock on the next door. As soon as I said the next house about to get it, like about to get a sale, she come out and cuss all of us out. Whatever you selling, I don't want I'm about to call the police, get the F off my property. But and, and why y'all get a new job, y'all in the rain, get a real job. And I was like, all right, God bless you. Jesus didn't sell everybody. We're gonna see you around like a donut. As soon as I turned around, she just like smiled. Like she smiled, but a tear came down her eye. She's like, excuse me, hold on, hold on. She's like, why are you so happy? I was like, you know, cause you know, I'm just I'm just happy to do what I do. I love what I do. I was like, and I forgot I said something else. And no, she was like, you believe in God? And I was like, yeah, I'm a Christian. And then she was like, you know what? I'm so sorry. She was like, I just, today just wasn't my day. She was like, here it is. You happy, you out here knocking in the rain. She was like, life ain't that hard. She was like, it's just that you came at the wrong place at the wrong time. She was like, I just happened to get a phone call that my son got murdered. I mean, got um, died in a car accident. And I was not expecting to like open the door for a salesperson. She's like, she didn't want to be bothered with a salesperson. Yeah. But I made her day with my personality. You know what I'm saying? So she, that's how she came at me. She came at me rude because she was having a bad day. So come to find out, she was like, so what are you selling? I was like, I started demo again. You know what I'm saying? She's like, no, she's like, I got a spot for it. She's like, if it clean this spot on my carpet, I'll buy. So as I walk in her house, I seen a gun like on the table. And I was like, oh, don't shoot. I'm just a good guy. She's like, no, no, no. Let me tell you. She's like, right before you knocked on my door, I was about to kill myself. And like right then and there, she was like, she was like, you just made my day. Like, so we talked for a minute and then I cleaned the spot. She ended up buying the bottle. And I still like communicate with this lady to this day. Like I talked to her like a couple years ago. She got like a real estate company not doing very well for herself. So I was like, just imagine if an average person that wasn't good up here. Cause you know, like you get salespeople that like once somebody cuts them out, Crazy. they retaliate. They'll say stuff back. I get, I get a lot of salespeople all the time. They can't control the emotion. They, oh, they would have tried to make her yeah, feel, small. feel small. And then she could have committed suicide. You know, you never know. You know what I mean? It was just like the right salesperson was at her door. You know, so that's all like stuff like that. People see that on TV, especially when we dealing with it in the real world. Like you never know. Like people are all the time like, man, you just so inspiring your video, motivation, all that. No, just going door to door is motivation. Dude. You know what I'm saying? I they wish don't we know could have body camps. I wish we yeah, had body like, camps for like a year. You know what I mean? And you're just like, you, you, you sit down and you, somebody brought that up yesterday, actually, door to door con. They were like, dude, Sam, you need to do a thing where you just send out a bunch of body games to these reps and they send it back because I swear every week you run into maybe not that big of a story, but like, I mean, you'll go into a house where, you know, mom and husband are screaming and kids are crying and all of a sudden they're like, get out of here. And you're like, ma'am, it's a beautiful day to be alive. You say something yeah. like that and they're yeah. just like, 
hard to be rude to somebody that's you know. Yeah, I, like, I, that's what I do. I used to when I knew people was like not having a good day or they come out real mad or mean to me. Uh, whatever are you selling? I'm not buying. Get out of here. Why is everybody so nice? I just hit them with that. Why is there, they looking like what? what? Like so? As I'm letting them know, like you should be nice. Should like be I haven't nice. ran into a bad person yet. Why are you upset? You know what I mean? But I'm not telling them that they mean. I'm just. Why is, Why is everybody, everybody so nice? nice? They think it was rude. And then it changed they like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like your energy. Like when you, the, the, the other thing is, like, in a real world scenario, if you were to meet them at the grocery store, they would never act like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like and we assume, like, everybody out here is dicks. They're all so rude to me. I'm like, naturally, they probably aren't a rude person. Right. Like, and so yeah. by just switching and be like, why is everybody out here so nice? You know, yeah. so nice. And yeah. all of a sudden they're like, Wait, I'm not normally like this. That yeah. was scary for me to even say it and be right. such a dick. Like, right. and not, that, like in California, I learned that a lot. Cause like California, so true. Like California, like cause like every state I went to, I learned how to adjust to every state. California, not like Utah. You know, no, no. Utah is not like Texas. Texas yeah. is not like you know what I mean. I went to North but Carolina I, one day. The next day, flew up to Massachusetts. Right. Man, I'm trying totally to say is. stuff in North Carolina. Yeah. I'm like, no, this is not working. <laughs> yeah. It took me half a day to figure myself out. Right, because you got to adjust. And that's what I learned Like with California. like Some of them, they had come to the door and be rude just to see if you're going to just give up. You know what I mean? And that's what I teach guys. Like, look, you persistence overrules resistance. But at the same time, like, you got to learn the difference between a rejection and an objection. Because, like, by me reading so many sales books, I learned that it's two sales going to be made at a door. Either they're going to sell you or you're going to sell them. Like, I could never get over, uh, I'm on the phone. Like, every time, like, I had, like, I'm telling you, I, like. Wait, it, you never could get over that? Yeah, but let me tell you, the only how I got over it, and I'm pretty sure you probably got some, what, what you was going to say about the country? Why you say that? I go, because mine's, it's so easy. Oh, that's cool, I'll wait, and I put my head down, I'm just go like this. Are you serious? And, and all I of a sudden, they're too. like, I wasn't even really on the phone. That's, that's, what, yeah. that's, that's what I'm about to tell yeah. you. Yeah. The reason why I said that, because, like. I used to never get over that until I realized they was lying the yeah, whole time. Yeah, they Like, look, I was I was packing my stuff up about to leave, and the phone actually rung on a lady ear. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I need to get one of those. She was like, huh? I was like, yeah, the one that don't ring before you answer. And then she, like, felt bad and ended up buying because she, like, got caught in her, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after that, I didn't believe nothing. Dude. I remember people was, like, p passed away and they was crying. And I'm like, I started acting like I was crying too. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. Moment of and I got right back into sales mode. Because after that, I was like, no, nah, I'm not listening to nothing they saying no more. I, I filmed this. And I, I should put the video out. I never put my live videos on the just the normal web. Because sometimes I'm nervous. They're in my online training platform. Right. But, uh... I go out and rock and roofs in Chicago, and this lady comes out. She's like, "My mom died yesterday." And she just starts crying, and you know, I actually think she was serious. And the dudes are all like, "Oh, sorry, ma'am," and I'm like, "Oh man, like you know, like what you're saying, like, oh, shoot, sorry." It's five minutes later, we're up on the roof inspecting the roof, and these dudes, there was like eight dudes shadowing me, and they were just like, "How the fuck did that happen?" I'm like, "Either one, she's lying because I've seen this before, and somehow she had a good soft story, or two. I just didn't like made her feel like a million bucks and gave her some love. Yeah. And then she needed it. Like, right. you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you still got Still you know selling I mean? it. Yeah. yeah. Still, like, that's what I tell people. The but, suicide like, lady still bought the water. Yeah, yeah. Or still bought the bottle. Yeah, that's, this person still, like, yeah. the F you dude they still, still bought. They still got to go on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, it's like, 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 I learned that, like, if you put your problems on the table and somebody put their problems on the table and you look at their problems, you will pick your problems up. Oh, I ain't getting no sales. That's my problem. Oh, my wife just divorced me. Oh, that's your problem. Oh, this person about to die tomorrow. The doctor just found out they got 48 hours to live. Oh, I don't pick my problems. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Like, so it really, like, at the end of the day, like, why make a permanent decision over temporary problems? We still got to live after that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's how I looked at it. Like, I had selector hearing. When I was knocking doors, I had selector hearing. Selector Only hearing. thing I had wanted to hear is two things. How much is it? Does it clean this? Because I'm looking at buying signal. I know if you lean in the door, if I knock on your door and you come out and you lean on the door, you a sale. Because you listening to me. You comfortable. How do you come out that, that you come out the house and you lean on your door? Like, you that comfortable with me? You're buying. Yeah, you buying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I give you a bottle or I give you a brochure and you get in and start reading it, oh, I'm closing you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and then I, I'm like, one of my favorite clothes is a trapper. You got a vivid imagination? Yeah. Can you picture yourself using the service? Yeah. How you picture yourself paying for it? 
Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I'm like, I'm already, then that's what, if you can't close, you can't sell. We know that, you know, the ABCs and the ABS always be selling, always be closed. But I like a lot of people don't know that. And some people, they don't have no confidence. That's why I be telling like new recruits and trainers, like you will get to the point that you don't believe in yourself so bad that this would be easy selling. You just won't close them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like time ain't your best friend when you waste it. That's why as, as a salesperson, we supposed to spend our time, don't waste our time. Like I know like off of the first 30 seconds if this person go buy for me or not. Because I'm looking at the buying signals. I'm looking at, you know what I mean? So true. Is so that true. Well, we got to wrap up due to time. But this was so good. Um, I think we need to do some more videos together. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, yeah. Guys, go uh, follow Kenny Brooks, Funny Salesman on Instagram. Um, guys, this was awesome, and I appreciate how you're showing up for the industry, what you're trying to do to help appreciate. bring awareness to how good it is, do it the right way, teach it with some personality. Um, it's been so fun. Share yeah. this and uh, make sure y'all follow Sam Tagger too. Like my, my followers, we connecting together, so his followers follow me. I follow. He's doing an amazing job with the door to door. Follow door to door experts. What, what else? Your tags? The Sam Tagger. Yeah, the Sam Tagger. We got a lot of stuff cooking though, so stay tuned. Y'all gonna see a lot of good stuff. Love it. Peace, yeah, guys. Peace. We'll see ya.